Welcome to my color grading tutorial for Final Cut Pro. I split up this tutorial in two parts. First part is how I actually color grade my videos using my own LUTs. And the second part is for those of you who want to see how I grade my videos in Final Cut Pro without using any LUTs or any plugins. So let's go. So I imported five different clips here to grade with you. The first four clips are recorded with the Sony a7S 3 and S-Log 3. And the last one is recorded with the Mavic Pro 2. To show you that the LUTs work with other flat picture profiles either, it just requires a little bit more tweaking. So let's start with the first shot and to import our LUTs, we go to the effects browser and type in custom LUT. There's our LUT loader. We drag it onto the first clip and then we can import the LUTs. I already imported my five marble film LUTs and I check which one I prefer for this clip. I think the first one fits pretty well. Then you need to adjust the mix, so the intensity of the LUT. In this clip I go with the 0.7. Then to tweak the exposure, we can go to the color board. I go to exposure over here. I open my Luma curves with Command and 7. Go here to waveform and go to Luma. Then I drag down the shadows over here. But you don't want to go below zero because then you're blowing out parts of the image. And I'm rising the highlights. Same here. You don't want to go above 100 because then you're blowing out the highlights. And what I like to do is to raise the midtones. And after raising the midtones, I can play with the shadows and the highlights again until I like it. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. Now to give the image a little bit more color contrast, we can go to color wheels. And here we got the shadows, highlights and midtones. And what I want to do is to give uh, the highlights a little bit more cooler feel. So we have a contrast to the rest of the image. And here I go to highlights and I drag down the highlight to the bluish cooler side. I would say over here. You can see the difference in the highlights. I think that's pretty nice to have a little color contrast here. You can also play around if your footage is off here with temperature, tint and hue. I'm not touching this for the clip. Uh, next up, we can check if her skin tones are on point. Uh, so you go to the effects folder again and choose draw mask. Drag it onto the clip and uh, now we can make the image a little bit bigger. So we can mask out her skin tones more easily. Then we go to effects, draw mask. And then we choose the parts of her face which are only skin tones so we draw a little bit around her lips and her eyes now we got her skin tones only we go to the scopes to vector scope and this line here indicates the right skin color so we see her skin color over here and we see it's a little bit off we can fix it by going to color and use saturation curves now we got a skin over here we go to u versus u because we want to change the u so we use the tool by selecting her skin now it selected her skin and we can drag it up and down and see how the waveform is changing and we want her skin to be right on the line and that's looking pretty good now we can deactivate the mask to see how it turned out and her skin looks pretty good. Now to intensify skin color, we can go to U versus set, choose again the parts of her skin we want to enhance and then we can go up and down to increase the saturation of her skin. In this case, because she's pretty tanned already, I would not go too high, maybe increase it a little bit and that's looking pretty good. So we can move to the second clip by adding our custom lot again, drag it onto the clip and this time I think I want to choose the second one. Since this clip is a lot darker than the first one, I'm using the mix on about 0.5. Let's move to exposure, change the scopes, then go down with the shadows, go up with the highlights. And this shot to make her pop, I'm raising the midtones a lot. I'm exposing on her and not on the rest of the image. So it's not that bad that some parts of the image are blown out. That's looking pretty good. Maybe go up with the saturation a bit. 
Now this time I'm using the use saturation curves for her skin again, but I'm not masking. I just want to give her skin a little, little pop into the red direction. And that's looking pretty good. And for the next three clips, I'm fast forwarding the editing process. So off to the second part. I imported five clips here to grade with you guys. Four of these clips are recorded with the Sony a7S III in 4K and S-Log3. The last clip is recorded with the Mavic 2 Pro. So let's start with the first clip. And first of all, I want to start to adjust the contrast. And I'm doing that by lowering the shadows and raising the highlights. I go here to color board and to check if I'm exposed right, I'm using the vector scopes by pressing command and seven. Here I can see if my image is exposed correctly. First of all, I'm going down with the shadows, but I'm not going below zero. Then I'm raising my highlights, but I'm not going above a hundred. And I always like to play around with the midtones. And when I'm adjusting the midtones, I always have to adjust the shadows and highlights afterwards. Since it's S-Log3, it's really desaturated and I can bump up the saturation by quite a lot. About 70 is all right. Next up, we can check if her skin color is on point. And we do that by going to the effects browser and uh, type in draw mask. Then we drag the draw mask onto the clip, go to effects and make the image a bit bigger so I can choose her skin more easily. And then I draw some mask around her parts of the face, which are not pure skin. And now we can move to the vector scope. And this line indicates the right skin color. And we see the line of our skin color. And it's a little bit off. So we fix that by going to your saturation curves, you versus you, choose the part of her skin and change it until it matches the line. We can deactivate the mask and we see that her skin looks pretty good. Now to intensify her skin, I think in this case it's not really necessary because she's pretty tanned already. But if you want to, you can play with the U versus set. There you go to her skin again and you can raise the saturation of her skin. I would not go too high in this case, but we can raise it a little bit like that should be fine. Next up, to create some color contrast, we go to color wheels and I want to add some cool tone to the highlights so we get a little bit of contrast to this warm mid-tone shadow area and we drag a little bit to the cooler side. I would say over here is pretty cool. And at the mid-tones, we can go to a little bit warmer side. So you can see it's creating a little color contrast and I don't want to go too crazy on this, but it adds a nice subtle difference. We can play around with the hue saturation curves and if we want to change some parts of the image, for example, like the windows, we can go to U versus U again, choose the part of the window we want to change and it indicates the color and here we can change it as we want it to. I think the use saturation curve tool in Final Cut Pro is a pretty powerful tool and you can really change every part of the image by using these curves. Let's move to the next shot. Same thing again here. We start by going to exposure, opening the Luma waveform. 
going down with the shadows, going up with the highlights and going up with the midtones. Since I want her to be exposed right, I'm exposing for her and her skin. So let's raise the saturation. We can check her skin tones again. This time I'm not masking it. I just want to go a little bit more to the orangey side, but only a little, little bit like that. That's looking good. And for the next three clips, I'm fast forwarding the editing process. So guys, this is my color grading process in Final Cut Pro. I hope I could help you out. You can check me out on Instagram for some upcoming stuff. Stay tuned for the next project. Peace.